Good morning, Modern Standards. This morning, we're going to be putting together our rough sawn file cabinet for our concrete countertop desk project. Yesterday, we put the sides together, glued them up. Last night, I stayed up late, and I got two coats of paint on the inside, so that way today we can assemble them. And we don't have to try to paint them on the inside, because that would just be a pain. Let's start assembling the cabinet sides. Mr. Figaro went to the vets the other day. He got neutered. He's in good spirits, though. Huh, mister? You doing good? Come springtime, we can let you outside. You can go and roam. Yeah. We're going to be using our Boss Stitch Brad Nailer with inch and a half long brads for putting our file cabinet shelves in. What are you doing? You're crazy. Tomorrow is supposed to be in the 40s here, so it would be a good day to sand the concrete countertop. Now I painted the underside of the middle shelf. I figured that way if someone's lying on the ground and looking up, if they're gonna see in, that's the shelf they'll see in at. I don't know. It made sense. Now for me right now, I'm not being super fussy about getting extra glue on spots. If I was staining the wood or leaving it bare, I'd be more concerned about the glue. Even if you sand it off, you think you got it all sanded off, if you're staining it, a little bit of glue will show up in your stain or your clear finish. I'm going to be painting on top of this so the glue will be hidden. This being built out of rough sawn lumber, nothing is perfect. The edge of this board is cupped out. You can see the gap here. So I'm gonna clamp it up. This side of our cabinet's gonna be up against the wall, so no one's gonna see it. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So you're going to see this gap, but no one's ever going to see this side of the cabinet. While we finish putting together the cabinet, I'm going to leave that clamp on the front. This back side's got a bit of a gap, so we'll Clamp that all together. <clears throat> the last piece we need to put on is our top piece. Let's get that glued up. Tight, it's back off the clamp. 
for a minute. Get it all in place. I'm going to need a shim. Let me show you. Making sure we're flush on the outside edge and the top. On this side, we're flush here and here, but we have a space there. So let's go grab a shingle and use it as a shim. I'll put a link to a video right here when we're organizing the basement. And by doing so, I know right where our shims are. We have our crate that our chicken plucker from Coops and More came in that we turned into a wood bin that we can keep kindling in and also store our wood shims. Perfect. That should be the right size. Put some glue on our shim. Nice. Put two nails in it this way and same this way. Take my razor knife and we're going to score the shim. Now is a good time to go around and wipe off any excess glue. Excuse our messy basement, but this is our workshop, my office, our growing area, our laundry room, our storage, our cave. We got our freezers down here. We store everything in our basement. We don't have any workshops. Someday we will. So our basement is all that stuff right now. I was thinking we better make sure that the metal bins fit in. Whew, they do. The other thing I was thinking, let me show you. I like it, so this is sticking out a little bit, maybe flush. So I like it set in about so. I think that looks nice. So let me show you on the back side, we have a lot of room. So why not, I think I got some scrap wood right here. Take a piece of scrap wood and make a stop so that way when we're putting them in we can put them in it'll hit the stop and it'll look nice we don't have to worry about fumbling it around or going too far in I think Gina would appreciate that I'm gonna screw these ones in place that way if we ever put something different in the cabinet and it's longer we can remove these so I'm gonna drill them out Perfect. All right, let's set the top one. The reveal we have on the bottom is inch and a quarter. But right there is inch and a quarter. Before I set the other screws, I just want to make sure it's all square still. It looks like this side's further back. Yep. Just want to measure and set everything the same. I like it. Try it. Boom. Cool. The glue should be set up enough. We can take our clamps off. We're going to sand this, but I don't want to sand it completely smooth. What I want to do is I want to sand it so when I rub my hands on it, it feels smooth, but you can still feel the saw marks. You don't want to take it completely off. I'm going to use 180 grit on my DeWalt sander. One of the tricks I found for sandpaper is if you buy automotive sandpaper from your local car store, 
It's more expensive up front because you're buying a big box of it, but it's cheaper per sheet. So if you know if you know you're gonna be doing a lot of sanding, go to your automotive parts store and buy their sandpaper. 3M makes a really good product. And that's it. It's as quick as that. I'll bring you in close. To me, it almost makes the saw mark stand out even more. This is after sanded. This is the side we haven't sanded yet. So you can see the saw marks, but I don't know. I find when you paint it, this will show better. When we were painting the Corbel, a lot of people were asking us what we were using for paint. Huh, you can't see it. Let's grab the other one. We use valve spar, which is Lowe's, furniture paint. This stuff is amazing. Don't know what it is, but it's durable. You don't see any brush marks or roller marks. It's a good paint. We have this off-white color, just a quarter of it. That's the color we want. We got a gallon of white to do our trim. We didn't like the white. So I'm gonna use this as my base layer. Uh, my last coat will be the off-white. For painting the rough sawn lumber, we have found that the foam rollers and foam brushes work awesome. They don't leave lint behind, they don't tear apart, they just work really well. All right, I'll let that dry for a little while, then we'll come back and we'll put the second coat on. Our helpers don't look too ambitious right now. What do you think this is, coffee break? Huh? You think this is coffee break, mister? Yeah, you. Oh, you gonna fall off. You're crazy. Crazy. What about you, huh? Yeah, you. You got anything to say for yourself? Now that our first coat of paint is dry, I'm going to take a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and just give it a light sanding. What I'm looking to do here is knock off any high spots in the wood, still the super rough areas, and if there's any lint or dust or dirt left behind from the first coat of paint, we're taking it off and smoothing it up. This time we're going to be using the off-white color that we want the cabinet. The glaze that Gina puts on will really accent this piece. Actually, I think it's right here. It's Valve Spar, Lowe's brand. It's their antiquing glaze. Gina gets that glaze on here, it's really going to pop and all the grain's really going to show. 
when people talk about how expensive tools are, sometimes I just have to laugh. So if you think about it, what would it cost for a desk? Just a plain Jane desk would cost a couple hundred bucks brand new. But then if you figured what it would cost to have somebody build this custom desk and the custom countertop and the custom concrete top, you're looking at, I'm sure, a couple of thousand dollars. So when you have your investment of tools and you're building projects like this, they pay for themselves pretty quickly. I understand the upfront cost is expensive, but if you do it over time, they pay for themselves pretty fast. That's what it looks like in place. Gina still needs to antique it and make it look like this with the glaze. But what do you think, Olivia? Do you like it? Yeah. Do you think mom's gonna like it? Definitely. Definitely. Pluto, do you like it? She's like, I don't know. I don't care. So we just gotta get the concrete top finished up. Gina can glaze that, which shouldn't take her too long. She only needs to glaze this side and the front. But that's gonna be nice. The stops work out perfectly. So you can't push them in too deep. I just got finished up doing an interview with Jake from White House on the Hill. I'm gonna put a link to that video right here in the description down below. Go check it out, tell Jake all the modern setters said hello. Tomorrow we should be finishing up the concrete countertop. That's the plan, right? It's gonna be warm out. You and mom got some fun things to do also. Yeah. So, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumma Acres. Hey guy, tomorrow homestead, self-sufficiency and freedom. Bye. Bye.